Hello, and welcome to SuperCloud 6 and the continuing discussion around AI innovation. I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with the Cube Research. Today, I'm joined by Paul Hawkins, CISO for Cypher Stash, a company that aims to secure your data, not just your systems. Welcome, Paul. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me. Uh, and thanks for joining, you know, tomorrow which it's you're already over to international dateline down there in australia uh you know it's really great to hear from the future and uh be able to uh, kind of get into this ai innovators dilemma uh especially where security is such key to it uh going forward so thanks for joining us yeah it's great and the future is looking sunny actually this morning so it's a it's a good day well i hope you send that uh, our way as well <laughs> what so let's let's jump into it uh you know what does it mean to secure data and not just the system? Aren't we really doing that with encryption in flight and encryption at rest? Um, so CyberStash, uh, which is the company I'm the, the CISO of, uh, we build a searchable encryption technology, and that's the technology that enables kind of the, the product offerings we have. And our, our message is securing the data, not just the systems. And traditionally, People have secured systems, so encryption at rest, as you mentioned, encryption in transit, but that the unit of protection is the database, for example. So people do encryption at rest, which mitigates the risk of somebody taking that database and copying it somewhere else. But if you've got access to the database, you've got access to the data. The technology that we've built um, allows you to um, secure individual pieces of data within a database, and then you can do really fine brain access control on that. And also you can have really great visibility of who has accessed what, which means that you can scope down the protection to the individual unit of data, potentially even to individual records. So that means that you can have a greater degree of control over what data is being used by what systems and what humans have access to what data, which is really interesting when you start thinking about how data is used in an organization, when you start you know, training uh, large language models, for example. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, and that's a good jumping off point because uh, AI is really built on data and you could say it's the ultimate data product that is AI. Uh, how do you believe companies have to think about protecting the data within AI? Well, it's kind of simultaneously an interesting future problem and well, kind of um, a modern problem where they businesses really want to use AI and large language models to accelerate their business decisions. It makes a lot of things really easy. You can kind of put some prompt in, prompts in and get some information back and then you can make decisions based on that. But at the same time, it's actually a really traditional problem. Having visibility of where your data is and what systems are using that data is something we've been doing in the security industry for a really long time. And the context of AI and the context of training models means that we just have to make sure that when we are training data, we know what we're training um, the, these models on. And so like a good example is um, if I'm a healthcare provider and I've got a bunch of information about um, patient records and um, treatments, in order to provide better information to the people in my business, I might want to have um, some models trained on that information, but I want to be really conscious that I'm only training it on genericized anonymized data. So being able to protect the, the truly sensitive data in that data set is incredibly valuable because it allows me to get the value from AI, but without leaking information that I am responsible for protecting. So it's trying to strike that balance of being able to move fast, but being really, really conscious of the data that I have to protect very strongly. Yeah, I, I, we totally agree. I think it's uh, that, that innovator's dilemma of how do I use all of the data uh, versus, you know, protect things like you were saying, like PII and uh, looking at how I put kind of guardrails on that data, but with not tying the hands of the developers and the folks trying to create yet n new data products. What are, what are the things that companies should really look at from a governance perspective and a data governance perspective that kind of tie into that? I think, well, the way I think about governance is this is the organizational machine you build that allows you to move quickly and make good, consistent decisions. And um, 
Humans are really good about figuring out complex problems, but you want to give them, as you say, guardrails and a framework for making that and um, making those decisions. And as a security person, where I think that my role lies is building that organizational machine, which allows the, the business or the engineers in, in my organization to make decisions around the, the products they build and where they can use this data, but not have to really figure out every time they go and want to use a data set, or what do I have to do to protect this? I want to build the, the decision-making framework that allows them to just move quickly, confident that the, the foundational security protections are built into those data sources. Yeah, and, and again, when we were talking earlier, uh, you, you mentioned that you're actually, you know, that's one of the places that you're actually leaning into AI as well is to help you get to, uh, I guess you could say, higher value development for your own product set by using AI and, and seeing how AI can play a role in that. Yeah, we're being very thoughtful and pragmatic about it at the moment. But if I think about my role, I'm supporting the engineers in Cypherstash building products and helping them build it in a secure and reliable and resilient way. We're doing some really interesting stuff with assembling kind of uh, well understood cryptographic primitives in a, an interesting way to deliver this searchable encryption. Right? Being able to do plain text searches and encrypted data is a hard problem to solve. And I want the engineers to spend as much of their time as possible solving that problem and not spending time with sort of the plumbing of how to assemble systems. So being able to use some of the AI coding tools to you know, help with syntax and help with um, structure and repeatable kind of lower value tasks means the engineers can spend more of their their time and effort on the actual hard problems, which then ultimately helps our customers with the, the products we build. That totally makes sense. And I, I think, again, it's it's one of those where you got to, it's a balancing act. And in fact, you know, I, when I uh, talk to other CISOs and we're out there talking to different organizations, a lot of them are trying to be, you know, not the, uh, I guess you could say the people who have to say no all the time, but how do they put things in place in particular you know, they're always, I'm always asking them, how do you see secure, you know, security playing nicely with those other organizations such as data engineering and platform engineering, DevOps, IT ops, you know, we all, we all have to get along, but how do, how do you approach that? And how do you suggest others are approaching that? Well, I think there's kind of two things that I really think about. The first thing, which is really important is that we are all in the same company. We're all trying to solve the same problem. The engineers, uh, the GTM folks, the sales folks, the product folks, the security folks, our overall goal is to build awesome products for our customers. So the first thing is that we're all in this together and we're all trying to then go in the same direction. We have different perspectives and we have different individual focuses, but we're all building towards a common goal. And the second thing is being the sort of traditional security department of no doesn't work. And Having empathy for the fact that you know, some engineers may have worked in organizations where they were worried to go and talk to the security folks because they got told no. I feel my job is to empower them to be able to get to their outcomes as easily as possible and give them guidance about the security domain, which they may or may not have a, a lot of experience in. And I'm really lucky that because you know, we're a security software company, security is front of mind for everything we do. So it's a really easy conversation. But me making the engineer's jobs easier is a, a real kind of north star for me and then because i've taken the approach of like how can we ship this thing on securely how can we ship product features securely how can we tweak our build process so there's the lowest amount of friction possible while still maintaining our security bar it means that when there is something that i do need to say no to and that's a pretty rare thing I've earned the trust with the engineers. So when I say, actually, we need to spend more time looking at this, they know it's a real thing. It's not just old security saying no again. So those, those two things work together so that we can move quickly and we can have a, a critical thought process around, you know, is this the right thing to do for our customers and our business? It, it, that makes total sense. And I, I think, you know, again, we've been, uh, you and I have both been at a particular hyperscaler, uh, and had to go through and had various different, uh, I guess you could say, uh, not having been in the security side of things, but been on the product uh, development side. I, I think you you look at it and go, I never felt that 
they were just there, you know, security in the CISO's office was there to say, no, I think they were looking to protect our customers, which we were all very customer, you know, working backwards from the customer uh, and very focused on that. But I think that especially with where you guys are, you know, your product is really focused on the data and really heavily. One of the big targets that I see when I'm talking to organizations and especially those that have gone through uh, the whole exercise of consolidating their data down is these data lakes and data warehouses, you know, data platforms have now become logical targets. What, what do you think when you talk to other organizations and they're like, okay, yeah, we have to protect this, but that's what the system's for. As you were kind of saying earlier, hey, we take the data warehouse or the data lake and they tell me it's secure from the outside. Uh, how do, what are the things that people need to really consider about that? Well, I think that people have done a really good job uh, historically of like, securing the system and securing the applications and uh, a lot of different places folks talk about their AppSec processes. But I think as we use more and more data and as we are able to identify those kind of behavioral trends of what normal usage and um, abnormal usage looks like, particularly if you think about like, the, 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 the medical application I was talking about before, there's unlikely to be like a big slurping of data out of the application in normal use. So if you've got really good visibility of the operations on the data, you can then identify when like when data is moving, because that's a lot of the challenge. Data lives in multiple different places in an organization. It could live in a NoSQL database, it could live in a SQL database, and then you're trying to aggregate these different types of data into a data lake to drive real value for your business. But you need to understand the, the superset of all of this data that's been pulled from different databases, are you still protecting it effectively? And does the risk profile of the data from a database that's activate, ac accessed in an individual record kind of style from um, a particular application, that's your, something you're pretty comfortable with. But if you punt all of this data into a data lake and then you're able to do like a lot broader analysis of it, the, the risk profile of that larger data set um, changes slightly. So being able to have the protection move with the data is really valuable. So you have a greater degree of confidence that when business teams join all of these data sets together, you still have the, the level of confidence that is protected and the business can still uh, reach their outcome and do queries on large data sets and get insights from it without leaking the individual records. Now, I think that's great advice. And I, I think, you know, kind of last question I, I have for you is kind of, as you look forward with this world of AI coming at us, this world of unbelievable amounts of data, what, what's your advice to other CISOs out there about how they should think about securing their data and securing their AI going forward? Well, I think there's two things I would say. One is that security foundations can be kind of boring, but they're super important. Like I've heard folks uh, refer to it as eating your security vegetables or cyber hygiene. Building that into the, the cultural ways of working in your organization means that everybody's focused on security being important. And you know, when they start building these awesome applications that are really good for driving business value and making great decisions, they think about, oh, what's the context here? And then the other thing is from the security program end, what are we doing to help people make good decisions? And a really good frame of reference I've used for um, large language model security is the OWASP top 10 for LLMs. And that's got some good um, categories around the particular types of threats and risks that you are considering when you think about building LLM applications. So you know, training on the right sort of data, interpreting the prompts that people are putting in, like being con conscious that that data could be leaked based on sort of different prompts that going into these um, general applications. So being really clear about what you're trying to solve and basing that on really good security foundations means that we can take advantage of the, the really fast development of AI and like really accelerating our businesses, but still keeping the, the data that we build our businesses on protected and safe. And then we can all kind of move fast. No, I, I think that that is a great spot for us to kind of wrap things up because I think, again, it's great advice uh, for other CISOs. And I, I think people can 
really take that to heart because I, I think things are moving so fast, but everybody, you know, uh, as we kind of joked about, are in the same canoe and we got to paddle in the same direction, right? And, uh, exactly. uh, well, well, thank you for coming on, Paul. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. Great having me. Stay tuned for more SuperCloud 6.